the senior faculty. Seminary. We will read responsibly our call to worship, and if you would read the parts that are in bold. Called by God. We come together to answer God's call on our lives. Made by God. We gather as creatures to reflect the glory of our Maker. Sustained by God. We give thanks for all the ways that God has seen us through. Saved by God. We offer ourselves in service to God's realm, wherever God leads. It is truly a good and joyful thing to offer thanks and praise. Let us worship God together.
together. Most gracious and all wise God, we are thankful for yet another academic year. We're thankful, O oh God, for the ways you've made. We're thankful, God, for the time you are permitting for us to study. We're thankful, God, for this community called NTS. We ask, God, that you might give us what we need on this journey that you might strengthen us and stretch us for the road ahead. We ask God that in our classwork and study, that you might affirm us for this work. We pray now, God, that you might center us for the journey that is before us. We're thankful, God, for all that you have already done. Now, God, as we worship together, we pray that our worship of you may be a sweet-smelling incense unto you. Amen. Who love him and keep his commandments. 
Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both I and my family have sinned. We have offended you deeply, failing to keep the commandments, the statutes, and the ordinances that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are under the farthest skies, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place at which I have chosen to establish my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeemed by your great power and strong hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give success to your servant today and grant her mercy in the sight of this man. At the time, I was a cupbearer to the king. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Crossing the street with uh, Dr. Davis and Dr. Gatkin, we had some prayer on our way. I'm sure some of you did. We were joking about the Marcus, what a gift he is to our community. He said he gave Cassandra the day off. She wasn't here today. <laughs> so we got a kick out of that. And uh, grateful for his guidance, helping us safely navigate our journey here. Thank you all for sharing in worship today. It is a true joy for me to be able to offer this message. I mentioned to Marcus because I caught myself as he asked, are you coming in the office? And I almost said I have to go preach for convocation, but preaching isn't a have to. It's a get to, isn't it, Dr. Hudson? We get to share in God's word, and I thank you for allowing me to present this message today that we reflect on from the teacher, the prophet, and leader, Nehemiah. This is convocation at Memphis Theological Seminary. As graduation is a time for us to commemorate the ending of a school year, convocation is our worship service to commemorate beginnings. A new academic year in theological education at MTS. As we start our 2022, 2023 academic year, we are also considering new beginnings in how we practice theological education for a church and a world that's forever been changed by COVID-19. How do we do that? What changes do we consider? Which changes would reflect most fluidly our commitment to scholarship, piety, and justice? Those are some of the questions that we wrestled with in our faculty retreat just a couple of weeks ago, those hard, deep questions. And in the midst of considering numbers and figures, our senior faculty, Dr. Marion Hudson said, these are deep questions. And we need to enter into a time of deep spiritual discernment. Thank you for your wisdom, Dr. Hudson. And we're going to embrace that calling from Dr. Hudson this year as we, as an institution, focus intentionally upon spiritual discernment for God's future for our institution. So in addition to this convocation, commemorating the beginning of a new school year, this service is also our formal and worshipful surrender to the Holy Spirit to guide our sermon for a brighter future at MTS. In our scripture reading for this morning, we hear where the people of Israel were also 
facing changes and big questions in their life of faith, in their existence. They knew that Jerusalem was vulnerable in its current condition, changes, and they knew that changes needed to take place for a sustainable future. We hear an account of this journey of restoration of the people of Israel in the words of Nehemiah. He would become the leader of the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the spiritual discernment process was led by he and others. If you read beyond chapter 1 in Nehemiah, you will hear numerous attributes of faith-filled leadership that Nehemiah displayed. He was a visionary, a good listener, had a strong commitment to teamwork, did not let fear drive change. He capitalized on strengths and overcame weaknesses. He shared planning with others before taking action. He was a servant. He was humble. He was a person of integrity. And most of all, he rooted all of this in prayer and spiritual discernment. And we don't have the time in this sermon today, at least Dr. Hudson said we don't. We don't have the time in this sermon to consider all of those attributes of Nehemiah today. But what I would like for us to do is focus specifically upon four attributes of Nehemiah and what I want to call Nehemiah's plan for spiritual discernment. And I'm going to offer us an acronym on that word plan to apply to our journey. P of Nehemiah's discernment process stands for prayer. That's where it all began. He reminds us throughout this book, if we'll read on further, of his surrendering to the Holy Spirit through prayer. When Nehemiah heard the troubles facing the people of faith and the vulnerability of Jerusalem, he responded, our scripture says, in his grief, in prayer. In verse 4 of our reading, Nehemiah says, When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before God of heaven. Friends, our faculty and staff will follow this example of Nehemiah and his team by having weekly prayer meetings throughout the semester every Monday morning at 9.30 a.m. During these gatherings, we will pray for our seminary community and, to, uh, and for us to surrender to the Holy Spirit in our discernment journey. Dr. Barry Anderson will lead that effort. We'll send out a weekly reminder and Zoom link for us to connect together, even if it be distantly, through Zoom. You know, I've shared with some of you before that prior to moving back to Corinth, Mississippi, I spent some time in St. Louis. I lived there for a while. And beyond cultural changes, there were also conversation challenges. They couldn't always understand me. I don't know why. I only speak one other language, but it happens to be Mississippi. So <laughs> during that time, and St. Louis, you know, every once in a while we would call out for something to eat. And you know, the first question they ask, or maybe the last question, they're going to get it in there somewhere. What name? I would say Heal. They said, How do you spell that? H E I L? I said, No, it's Heal. I was putting that extra syllable in there, Paris. It takes a skilled order to make a two-syllable word out of you. <laughs> so I got tired of the frustration, Ruby, and instead of saying hill, I started saying Joe. Worked like a charm. There's a lot of, there's a strong Italian community in St. Louis. Some of you may know that it's actually called the hill. How about that? We love Italian. I would call a certain place where I thought they had known me by now. They did it. I placed my order once. She said, what's the name? I said, it's for Joey. Wrote it down, didn't ask the question. I went to get my food, Barry. Walked in. 
saw the lady there working the reception area. Her name was Mary. She said, hey, Jody. I said, see, they know me now. She said, let me go grab your order. She went in the back. She came back and said, I don't see your order. I said, you don't. I called it in. She said, well, what did you have? I said, well, we had toasted ravioli, spaghetti, and manicotti. She went back and said, yes, I found your order, but your name's not on the ticket. I said, oh, well, sorry to hear that. She said, but it's got to be yours. She said, for some reason, they put it under the name for Chony. <laughs> Italian community, right? I said, how did they get for Jody? I said it's for Jody, and somehow they broke down for Jody. <laughs> they weren't listening, were they? But you know what I found over time? The longer we lived in St. Louis, the better they understood me. Mark Lyle, it may have been this. It may have been that they weren't understanding me better. Maybe I was starting to sound more like See, the more we listen to someone, the more we start to sound like someone. Who knows? The more we listen for the voice of God as an institution, just maybe we will start sounding a little bit like Jesus to the world around us. We will. Surrender this process to prayer. <coughs> prayer is not only talking to God, it is in John. Prayer, most importantly, is listening to God. But you know, we're not only going to listen for God's voice, we're going to be listening for the voice of one another. That's the L of our Nehemiah plan for discernment. We begin with prayer and we transition into listening. Listening, yes, first to God, but listening also to one another. When Nehemiah heard from his friends, his brothers, whether they were earthly brothers or faith-filled brothers to Keisha, he heard from Hananiah and he listened to the concerns people Israel. He sought input from those who were going to help with the rebuild effort as they toured the destructions. Friends, we will be led through our strategic planning process at MPS by our planning and evaluation committee here this morning. Known for short as the P&E. That group is made up of representation from faculty, staff, students, trustees, and alumni. They'll evaluate the hard data and visit with other institutions of higher education to consider what changes we might embrace to help us continue to achieve, hear me now, excellence in theological education. This will ensure that our entire seminary community has a voice in the process. The A of Nehemiah's plan, I think of adoration. Adoration, adoration to God. Nehemiah never lost sight that the church exists to serve God. In this passage of scripture, Nehemiah uses the word servant eight times in the short 11 verses in chapter 1. First and foremost, Nehemiah was a servant to the king, but more than a cupbearer to the king to which he'd been exiled, Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king of kings, a committed servant to the Most High God. I titled our message today, cupbearers to the king. For us to approach our strategic planning process through spiritual discernment, we must never forget, friends, that our goal is to bring adoration to God in this journey. To remain cupbearers of the king, serving God in all our efforts. Not our own opinions, agendas, 
God's glory. As I shared with you my time in St. Louis, I was working in sales and sharing in bivocational ministry at that time in my life. And I did a lot of work driving up and down the road, right? You would be working the phone from this visit to another. And once I come home to Mississippi and I visited, was headed back to St. Louis, came through Memphis and, and took I-40. And then, you know, some of you that are familiar with that path, you take I-40 and then 40 forts and you go 55 north towards St. Louis, except when the fort came, I didn't take it. <laughs> I kept traveling, kept handling my business, kept conducting the sales call I was on. I sped up a little bit. I was making good time beat. I was on the way, and then I got a little further down the road, or maybe a lot further down the road, and I saw a sign that would be familiar to Dr. Davis. It said Little Rock, 40 miles away. <laughs> I was making good time. <laughs> but I was in the wrong direction. Dr. Mincy Minor and I discussed on more than one occasion that when we consider changes in theological education or institutional changes, we should not be driven by fear or fear driven. We should be vision and mission. make changes out of fear, friends, we may find ourselves going in the wrong direction, <coughs> making great time, but ending up in the middle of it. <laughs> Our goal should not be change for convenience, whether it be academically, institutionally, or whatever. Our goal should not be change for convenience. Our goal should be for excellence in theological Recently, Dr. Gatke reminded me that when our seminary moved to Memphis in the 1960s, it was because our forebearers were mission-driven and not institutional-driven. That's our goal to be mission-driven, I'll say again, not institutional-driven. When they came here, our seminary's institutional structure changed, but our mission stayed the same. This institution is here today, in existence today, because those who moved our seminary were more committed to navigation than implementation. You see, that's the
great things about a new academic year is that it often includes new people. Uh, it certainly includes new students. We are delighted with the students who are joining us this fall and the students who are returning uh, with new experiences to share with us uh, in classrooms. We're also delighted that we have two new faculty members. And it's my distinct honor to introduce them, and then we will have a prayer of blessing for them. And for the prayer of blessing, I'm going to ask them to come forward and stand here that we may extend our hands in blessing. So let me begin with Dr. Johnny Jeffers, who uh, is no stranger to MTS, uh, though he is coming in at, in a new role as administrative faculty. Dr. Jeffords has many years of pastoral experience, uh, most recently at St. John's United Methodist Church, which is approximately 4.2 miles from the <laughs> Theological Seminary. That's what my GPS tells me on my bike. Um, so he's bringing years of pastoral experience, uh, including working with people who are moving towards ordination in the Methodist Church. Uh, so he is most qualified uh, to be leading our new center for pastoral wholeness and chaplaincy studies. He is going to be the, is now the director of the Center for Pastoral Wholeness and Chaplaincy Studies. Uh, pastoral wholeness is being developed as we go. Chaplaincy studies has a, a more distinct history at this point in that we are partnering with the Center for Chaplaincy Studies based out of Chicago uh, to be able to provide to our students excellent coursework in preparation for the Ministry of Chaplaincy. This is a, a significant step in the life of the institution that we are focusing so directly on chaplaincy. And we're most grateful to the Assisi Foundation of here in Memphis for providing the funding for us to develop this program in chaplains of studies. Our other uh, newbie is Ferris, and uh, Ferris Blunt comes to us uh, from both the West Coast and the East Coast, uh, and the heart of this land, the great state of Texas as well. Uh, I haven't asked him yet if he's a Dallas Cowboys fan, I hope he's not. Uh, he's not, that's good. Uh, <laughs> Ferris Blunt comes to us from the West Coast in the sense that his undergraduate was at Stanford University. Uh, he comes to us from the East Coast in that his master's degree was at Harvard Divinity School, and he's just about finished with his PhD from Boston University. Just all he has to do is defend that little thing called the dissertation, and he'll be done. So you can join with me in applause for our two new faculty members. <laughs> now, if you can come forward so that we may do this blessing, you'll see in your bulletin that there's uh, light print and bold print. In the bold print, please join me. Bless these two new faculty members. God of every new beginning, we give thanks for these persons whose ministry is teaching. Just as wisdom was active when Jesus spoke with his disciples, give these faculty members the compassionate insight they need to make wisdom come alive in this community. Give them physical and mental strength to complete the work that awaits them. Give them courage to speak truth in love, even when they may be challenged for doing so. Give them the spirit of compassion to feel the suffering of others. Give them the awareness they need to care for their own well-being in the midst of endless demands. Give them hearts that feel the loving peace of your presence, even when doubt dances with their faith. And 
and show us, O oh God, how to be worthy of their trust as people sharing this journey toward the light. Through Jesus, the Rabbi, the Rabbi, the Rabbi, the Rabbi, the Rabbi, Join me in prayer for this new academic year. Gracious God, we come to you at the beginning of this academic year with our many feelings, expectations, fears, and hopes. Help us to remember, however, we have the comfort and assurance from you. I will always be with you. Loving God, for all of us, this is a time of transition. It is a transition from the work and leisure of summer back to the classroom. It is the transition from time spent with family and friends. Give us patience with ourselves as we transition as well as patience with one another. Faithful God, this beginning is totally new for some among us. Thank you for the eagerness that accompanies their openness to new friends and new opportunities. We ask that you turn anxiety about academics to excitement about scholarship, piety, and justice. 
Give us a new perspective to see persons, events, and academic work as an invitation to develop the many gifts you have given to us to be used in service for others. Creator God, some in our community are moving into their last year in MTS. Thank you for the excitement that fills their hearts. We ask that you bless them with your gifts of awe and wonder at the friends they have made, the way their minds and hearts have been changed, and the many opportunities that lie ahead. Give them the gift of discernment to make the right choices about the future. Finally, God, give to each member of the MTS community the gifts of the Spirit, wisdom, understanding, right judgment, courage, knowledge, reverence, and awe and wonder. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
benediction, would you receive with me this blessing? May the grace of our Lord Jesus.